Welcome to Violin Adventures number 133. We start right off working on the mystery violin. Okay, here we go. We're going to take these clamps off and see what the scene looks like. Okay, I need to get the glue off of here. It looks very good. Feels good. So we got the back together. Just out of curiosity, let's see what it sounds like. Okay, sounds good. It's got tone. Let's see how thick it is. Okay, it's about right in its graduation. So it's not too thick or too thin. It's just about right. So we're going to set this aside now and just concentrate on the top. Let's see if it has any tone yet. Okay, there must be a big opening still because I can't, there's too much rattling. Here's the opening right there. Not a lot of tone in this at this point. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close up this big crack right here. And then I'll, I can't wait to get this base bar out and put a new one in and that should really help. We heard that little buzz in this top, so I glued it up this morning, and then there was another repair and some lessons, and now I'm gonna go ahead and take the clamps off of this. It doesn't need to be clamped for 24 hours. And let's see if we can hear any tone yet. Okay. Okay, I don't hear any more buzzing. That's awesome. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take out this base bar, which is not a base bar because they just shaped it out of the top of the violin and that's not the way you do it. I suppose they thought it was a fast way to get it done, but it's gonna sound so much better when we do it correctly. So I'm gonna take this out and uh, I was um, it has some tone in there, so that gives us hope that this we hopefully can revive this little violin. So let's Okay, I have two blocks, two blocks of wood here that are nice and straight. Okay, among these, I'm gonna set these all aside. And here, this is one that we just used half of this on our last repair that turned out really well. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one. It's got a beautiful tone and we'll fit it into the violin right here. I'm working on this. We're going to fit a bass bar, right? But this is sitting in front of me and I got distracted because this has so many struggles and problems. So this fingerboard has been raised up quite a bit. Let's see how much. About four, four millimeters this fingerboard has been raised up and then it's been carved down up here. So there's hardly any fingerboard left. So they really worked on uh, changing this angle, but it's, it's all a mess. And then they dug into this scroll. See how they cut this down? This should go straight up. So we'll see if this needs strengthening or not. Got the fingerboard off, and this is what is underneath. It doesn't look like wood damage. It just looks like maybe they didn't have a sharp gouge, and so they kind of just ripped out the wood. The new violin. Okay, remember our 
violin is still in the white, has lots of volume, so I think it's about ready to varnish. So we're going to play it one last time before we take it down. Okay, here's our white violin. You heard me play Amazing Grace on it, and I think it has calmed down a bit. We've tamed it a little bit, but it still has so much power, and um, it still has so much growing. I'm gonna play it a little bit more, and then we'll take it down. Here's our white violin before we take it down and varnish it. Package arrives in the mail. Okay, we interrupt our violin adventures in order to show you a box from Israel. We get a box from Israel once every month, and this one was an interesting one, and it has to do with Passover, so I'll let you see what's inside. So we open our box here, and it says, Welcome to Springtime. On the top here is a book on Pesach, or Passover. And I haven't looked it over, but here's the five names of Passover with the matzah up on the top. Uh, here's a picture of the door and the festival of matzah, which is the festival of unleavened bread. It's a festival of freedom, of redemption. These are the Festival of Spring. Oh, here they're burning the leaven um, that they found in their houses. Spring cleaning is a great time to do spring cleaning. Celebrating freedom behind the doors. So these might be people that are have been imprisoned. Zionist fighter inside a prison. How awful that is. And here in 1994, playing chess with a world champion. And he said he used to play chess in his head when he was in solitary confinement. Very interesting. This looks like a very interesting article. This is Natan Sharonsky, Passover in the Bethlehem prison. Very interesting book, it looks like. 
making the bread of freedom. So this will be our making matzah, how it's made in 18 minutes. An altar there. This is from the Temple Institute, pictures from the Temple Institute. Beautiful book on Passover. Then we come right here to this box. Here is matzah that's made in Jerusalem. Uh, this says freedom, and under here we have Jerusalem Chocolate Boutique, fruit and nut milk chocolate bar. And these are Judean spices, and these spices are really good. Here's a nice, nice amount of olive oil. We can get it straight from Israel. Here it says, this is a ceramic vase, a beautiful vase. Anti-aging face cream with rosehip and saffron. And a natural hand cream with rosehip and fig. And then at the very bottom of the box here, we have where the products were made and pictures of how they're made and, and who made them. Okay, we've got one more box to open. And so I decided to order some, some special wooden tiles that snap together. Okay, I got a surprise when I opened it up. This is not flooring. This is a big surprise. This is from one of you guys there. And you went ahead and ordered me a turntable and a radio. And it looks like a CD player. Wow. I am really surprised and thank you very much. Uh, big thanks to Chuck Kenny. Thank you for sending this. <laughs> Um, a big surprise and thank you so much. Well, here it is, up close thing. So this is just perfect to have here in the shop. Thanks again. Okay, I went upstairs and found some of my CDs. I've got stacks and stacks of them. He listened to some of these records. on our new violin. Okay, here is our violin with the first sealer coat on. I wanted you to see the back blending here with the ribs. Isn't that beautiful? It, it just goes right around and uh, just fits in nicely with the flame on the back. So here's the other side. So it just goes right around. That That's really nice. This one is really pretty. So on our beautiful violin here, I'm trying to decide, do I want to put asphalt on it and darken it up, or do I want to spray it with a little bit of red in our sealer coat and then do an oil varnish? All these ideas. The new cello. Okay, here's the dilemma. Just, I don't usually have back pain, but this week I've had back pain, so I'm not carving on this probably till next week and I realized I don't have wood for the neck and here lo and behold I'm looking through the wood room and this looks like a perfect match for our back here and this is from the same place that I got the back wood and that is 
United Strings International in Pennsylvania. Now, I had looked that up and I couldn't find it. I don't know if they're still in business. So I think we'll go ahead and work a little bit on the neck and that'll save my back for next week. Okay, and this piece of wood here is a little bit warped and it wobbles. So we got to get that wobble out before we can uh, trace on it. Okay, we've got the base bar ready to glue in here, and I didn't want to bore you with all the details, so we're going to get the clamps and get this glued in. Okay, here is the base bar all glued in. The thing nice about this violin is that we don't need a sound post patch and there wasn't a crack uh, around this base bar so we have less to worry about. Okay we're gonna take off the clamps on our base bar Friday afternoon, the birds are all singing. The sky is white and blue, lots of green. It's very pretty out here. Let's go inside, see what's going on. Here we are inside the shop. We're just right in the midst of things this week. So let's see here. Here's our cello. We'll hope to get back to carving next week. Our scroll is now cut out. Now we have to make some special cuts up here because the cello scroll is just a little bit different than the violin scroll. So we'll save that for next week. Over here is our new violin looking very beautiful. Here's our mystery violin. So I need to take this bass bar down I need to work on getting these uh, ribs back on the back, get some blocks here, and then I've been looking at this and trying to think about it. We've got to fill the holes here, and then this neck, the maple is really, really strong, and I've been trying to decide do I want to graft in another neck and just keep the scroll or not. Freddie wants to chat. Hi, hi, I, I, I'm Freddie and I'm so excited because you guys send in a whole bunch of pictures for my, my, this is my, what is it? This is your corner of the episode. Yeah, yeah, this is my corner of the episode. Okay, now, I'm going to put your pictures right here, okay? This is a harp sent in by Davy Clark. First, this is a 26-string Paraguayan-styled harp made up of components that he received from his harp mentor, the late maestro John Kovac, who originally crafted the components. The neck and pillar are the original, near antique aged components, which were long ago painted by Guatemala's famous artist Antonio Gonzalez. The body of the harp is only about four years old. 
Since this is a festive North American style harp, he decided to paint the body with brighter fun colors that would match the base of the painting done by Antonio. Then his wife Jan, a visual artist, painted on the flowers on the sides of the body to complement Antonio's artistry. The flowers, birds, insects, and volcanic lake and scenery on the neck and pillar are from Antonio's home in Guatemala. This heart project is a renovation and hybrid of components from which he is going to use as his personal and clinical music travel harp. It also uses his first Polonia wood soundboard with mahogany and maple string and support ribs constructed using only hide glue. Thank you, Davy, for sending in these pictures. These pictures are sent in from Timothy Winters. He is showing us what he's been working on all this last month. These are the pulleys and parts of his line shaft. He's been enjoying making these machines run on his line shaft. And he says it is so nice to listen to the sounds that the quiet sounds of the machines as they run on his line shaft. Wow, I think we all need line shafts set up in our shops, right? <laughs> also, he had to move some of his shop around and so he has two shops, one in his garage and one in his home. And here is so, the one in his house is so neat and organized. So many beautiful drawers and the setup is just lovely. So thank you, Tim, for sharing your shop with us. Hey, did you like that? That was really good. And I got a secret for you guys. You guys, you know something? Next week, my boss is doing a ladies retreat at her house. And so, um, she she's probably not gonna do a video. And so, I'm probably gonna do the video all by myself. So, if you guys send me something, I can put it on the video, okay? Just. It's just a secret between you and me because she might not have a video next week, but I can have a video because I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. So I I won't be at the retreat. So it will just be us, us guys on the videos and all, all of you people out there, ladies and men that wanna send in your, if you send in your pictures, it will just be my episode the whole time. So anyway, I better get going because I'm taking a long time talking. Okay, bye. Yes, and Freddie is right. Next week, I probably won't be able to do another episode, but if you send in projects or have messages or videos that you want me to share, Go ahead and do that, and Freddie can take care of the next episode all by himself. The Hebrew Minute. Vahaya emunat iteka chosek yeshuot Hakmat yadaat yarat Hashem he utsaro. The stability of your time will be strength of salvation, wisdom and knowledge, and the fear of the Lord or Hashem that will be his treasure. If you know where this is found, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, for all your wonderful comments, for your thumbs up, and thank you to the new subscribers. And until next time, God bless you. Bye.